Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the final day of the workshop. So, so far, we have been, you know, going through all the aspects of uh, research and academic publication and ethics. Good morning. I'm Dr. Kasturi Goswami, and I welcome you all to this one week workshop on research and academic publication and ethics conducted by Economic Study and Research Center, Department of Economics, Bahana College, in collaboration with IQSC Bahana College and funded by Johar Development Authority. Since we are on the topic of publication and all the ethics related to it, it's very imperative that we also know something about open access publication. To guide us through this process, we have with us today Dr. Murugan, who is working as an assistant professor at the School of Management Studies, University of Hyderabad. He has also worked with IIM Shillong, Australian Council for Re Educational Research, New Delhi, and National Institute of uh, Technology, Tirchi. He is very passionate about research and has been a resource person to more than 190 workshops, FDPs, MDPs, conference, keynote speak, uh, refresher course, and faculty induction programs, which is organized by different institutes across India and abroad. His research interests includes work-family balance, work-family conflict and facilitation, work engagement, and individual well-being and educational assessment. He has 16 international journal publications, which are published in SSCI, ABS and ABDC listed journals. He has also presented 21 national and international conferences and seminar presentations. He has developed online lecture videos for three of the courses offered by Swayam platform. His expertise lies in the areas of multivariate data analysis techniques, mediation analysis, moderation analysis, structural equation modeling, latent profile analysis and item response theory. He is also very familiar with data analysis sof software such as M+, MOS, Python, R, JMOV, JSP, SPSS, Bulk, Blue Sky Statistic, Conquest, and IRT Pro, to name a few. No one can be more apt than Dr. Murugan to guide us through all this session. Welcome, Dr. Murugan, once again to Bahana College. And we are very glad that you have agreed to join us today and enlighten our participants. I'm hoping that all our participants benefit from you. With this, I would like to hand over the stage to Dr. Murugan. But before that, as usual, participants, please keep your microphones off and video off while the resource person is presenting. And if you have any queries, post it in the chat box, or you can raise your hand at the end of the uh, session and ask your questions directly. Uh, ask your questions directly the, to Dr. Murugan. With this, Dr. Murugan, the platform is all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Kasturi and uh, other uh, colleagues of uh, Bhavana College. And uh, thanks for organizing this event. I think uh, second time I'm delivering something for your college. Uh, I mean, it happens my pleasure to do something for the academicians, I mean, academic work in general. Uh, I, I don't know the reason why your organizer is uh, asking you to mute the video also. So if you're interested, if you want to show your face to others, uh, you are free to uh, unmute your uh, 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 videos, provided I get permission from the organizing uh, committee. Uh, of because of course, they can go ahead with uh, yeah, uh, you know. because I have two different monitors. Um, in another monitor, I could simultaneously see your chat as well as uh, your face. In another uh, window, I'll be able to share my screen. I mean, uh, I'll be able to share my PPT. So that's the reason I'm saying if you're interested, okay. you can show your face. Uh, that is like a motivation for the speakers. For example, in the classroom, Unless we see some of our students, our own students, we may not be able to get a lot of motivation to proceed further. Similarly, in online session also, I expect the same thing. So it's up to you. You take your decision. Uh, 
So for the next two hours, uh, what we are going to discuss is uh, something called open access publication. So this open access concept as well as open access publication is not completely new to the existing world. So it's something like really old concept only. Uh, old in the sense at least 10 to 20 years, uh, I mean, uh, old concept. Um, so uh, before we get into the open access publication, um, I would like to uh, emphasize something about what is open access, creative common license. Then later we'll, uh, I mean, uh, uh, we'll discuss something more about open access publication and so on. These days there are some journal houses, I mean, publishing houses, they're publishing only open access papers. There are some publishing houses where they do publishes open access uh, category papers as well as, uh, I mean, paid category papers and so on. So here I'm referring paid category in the sense, in order to download your own paper, you may have to pay something or you need to have the subscription of that particular journal uh, um, with respect to your institution subscription processes concept. So otherwise you may not be able to download that particular paper. So that is what I'm referring it as paid category. So we'll have more discussion about each and every concepts a uh, little later. Now you try to understand something about uh, uh, the current scenario in India. So these are some of the bits and pieces of uh, articles and maybe uh, WhatsApp messages. And uh, uh, there, are, there are some more evidences also available even in the academic literature. So uh, almost all of these news cuttings are uh, kind of old only, old in the sense at least uh, one year or one of year old content. Uh, but but if you look at uh, the current scenario, nothing has been changed drastically. Even now, uh, this sort of practices are happening in India. So if you look at this particular uh, WhatsApp message, let me zoom it further so that you will be able to uh, see the exact WhatsApp message. So I was there in one of the WhatsApp group so there, uh, somebody has posted this content. Combo 2020 works, five authors only for mechanical domain, 10 UGC paper publication, 10 Scopus paper publication, one book publication with ISBN, one patent publication. Author names, roster model, based on anybody interested, contact me. Everything uh, mind responsible, you are, need to pay the payment only, initial 50%, after acceptance, uh, another 50%. Just think about uh, this particular uh, WhatsApp advertisement, I mean, WhatsApp group advertisement. Uh, this is not something new. Um, even now, I could see a lot of messages in uh, Facebook group, LinkedIn group, WhatsApp group, where people are saying that the third author portion is vacant, fourth author portion is vacant, second author portion is vacant. You please uh, lend your name uh, by paying some 15,000, 20,000 rupee you get UGC CAD listed publication or Scopus indexed publication. So this is a sort of advertisement. Uh, I mean, keep on getting it through some other uh, social media platforms. This is one part. Then second part is, you. Uh, I don't know, from where they are getting the mobile numbers of the faculties. And uh, even I used to get uh, calls from some of the consulting firms. So I'm not questioning or I'm not commenting anything about the kind of support system, uh, uh, I mean, they are providing part of their consulting job. Uh, they say that, uh, sir, uh, do you need any uh, uh, publication support? I asked them, yes, I need publication support. I would like to publish my paper in Academic Management Journal. Uh, you please help us to publish my paper in Academic Management Journal. Academic Management Journal is considered as number one journal in management, number two or number one sort of journal in management domain. Hardly you see, uh, people coming from India uh, are Indian universities. Those are having papers in AMJ. Uh, maybe like three or four people might be having uh, AMJ level publication. Those are working in Indian universities. Uh, so that's the credibility of that particular journal. Then she told me that, sir, please give me five minutes. I'll give you a call back. I'll uh, check with my uh, superior uh, with respect to publishing your paper in this particular journal. Then after 10 minutes, uh, I got another call. She told me that, sir, we are not uh, assisting, uh, we are not giving any assistance in terms of publishing your paper in AMJ Startup Channel. So it's really difficult to track it. So I appreciated her uh, commitment. At least you know that uh, this is really difficult to crack uh, AMJ. 
then politely i told her that uh, kindly remove my number email id from your database i don't need any support from your side uh, um, in terms of publishing uh, my papers and some other locally published journals and so on this is another part of the story then another story is uh, i don't want to name the uh, university as well as professor name without his concern one of the local uh, publishing house they just kept him as a editor of that particular journal though he has a lot of credibility credibility in the sense he has papers in you name any top tier journal in science domain with respect to that particular area of research you could uh, uh, get one or two papers so that's the credibility of that particular person then that particular university came to know that he is acting as one of the editor i mean associate or maybe chief editor of that particular locally published i mean pay and publish sort of journal then they took some decision against the uh, uh, person also then he went to the court and proved that uh, without my consent uh, without getting any uh, opinion from me i mean uh, uh, i mean unless you provide your consent your name will not be attached to any of the journal so without getting any uh, consent they just simply kept his name then finally he could be able to uh, uh, prove he is not guilty and so on so this is another story uh, like that, there are many more stories that are available in the Indian context with respect to this pay and publish. I'll, I'll, I'll share one more incident which I have heard through some of my colleagues. So uh, in central and state universities, uh, even in IITs, IIMs, in the recent past, they're doing a lot of recruitment. For associate professor position, I think as far as UGC regulation is concerned, uh, 2018 UGC regulation is concerned, seven papers are required. Uh, that particular person has close to 75, 75 or 80 papers, but not even single paper is listed in UGC catalyst. He, uh, he or she is considered as one of the pioneer researcher uh, um, in his university, but when it comes to the uh, screening commissioner, uh, committee or maybe a selection committee, is not having not even single paper in terms of uh, shortlist, shortlisting a CV for, his or a CV for uh, associate professor position in one of the uh, university southern part of the university so what i'm trying to say here is i don't know the reason why people are having a lot of grace about uh, publishing papers and paying the published sort of journal this is another incident which uh, recently i come across uh, part of uh, some of the recruitments happened in uh, central as well as state universities another pathetic scenario is uh, even in some of the private colleges and then private universities they have a lot of target so the target is like this, unless you publish two papers in a year in Scopus uh, indexed journals, your salary will not, uh, will not be revised. We'll see your uh, performance for two years. After that, uh, you might have to leave the job and so on. This is a kind of strict norms or rules they're postulating against the faculty. And in turn, what is happening is they're just uh, uh, going for some pay in the published sort of journals. And uh, for example, without uh, listing their journal in any of the standard database even with the help of gmail account even they don't have a uh, um, permanent domain for their website where they are providing some information about their uh, journal um, information i mean journal uh, uh, paper submission information and so on but uh, still they say that you submit your paper you pay this much of money within a week uh, i'll accept your paper and so on this is also another story that is happening so like that, I can uh, talk, I mean, I can bring more incidents and more stories uh, uh, throughout this session uh, because you know that uh, where we are lacking and uh, uh, I mean, uh, again, management or maybe university vice chancellors or maybe some of the top level uh, university authorities, they should take some initiatives in terms of creating some awareness among the people, their own people. Uh, uh, what is uh, reputed publication, what is pay and published sort of journal publication, what is predatory journal publication, and so on. You submit your paper to one of the Scopus Index journal, and uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow, that journal may not be available in Scopus Index. And they will uh, do hangama at the stage of submitting their thesis, or maybe when they uh, uh, come for recruitment and so on. Uh, once upon a time, this journal was listed under Scopus, even that was there in UGC care list, now they have removed it. Now I don't know. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, what should I do in terms of submitting my thesis or maybe in terms of uh, uh, getting this job and so on? So that is also like another pathetic situation. Uh, 
Uh, so like that, there are, uh, I mean, many more incidents are happening with respect to Indian publications and is concerned. So this is one of the story. If you look at this particular newspaper article, this was published in 2019, Indians top contributors to fake journals, UGC to crack down. So there are some predictive journals. I mean, fake journals are available in the market where they claim that I have an impact factor of uh, 5 point something, 6 point something, 7 point something and so on. But when you ask them, how do you compute this uh, impact factor? So uh, there is a group in Gujarat. I don't want to name the group actually. I don't know still whether they are doing this particular business. Uh, uh, again, that was uh, run by some of the reputed uh, professors working in uh, universities, private academic universities or public universities. I don't want to name them or I don't want to name any of the universities. They are from North. That much only I know. I was there in their WhatsApp group for some time. Then after that, I fed up with the conversation. Then I left the group uh, very long back. So there, uh, they claim that uh, our journal impact factor is 5.5 something. And the uh, funny part is they are not having any online mechanism to uh, restore their published papers. And they don't have any online mechanism to trace the number of citations which their uh, published papers are uh, uh, getting day by day or maybe uh, uh, monthly once or weekly wise and so on. But uh, uh, they, they do make certain claims stating that our journal impact factor is 5.5 or 6 point and so on. They call it as global impact factor. I can name the impact factor also, global impact factor. Then I asked them, how do you compute global impact, impact factor? They said, uh, we have a formula to compute it. OK, you please tell us the formula. How do you compute this global impact factor? And wh uh, what is your uh, total paper citations and so on? They don't have any answer. Then. Um, Again, I asked them, uh, how do you uh, trace the uh, citations of your papers? They don't have any answers. If you look at Clarivate Analytics or maybe Scopus Site Score, uh, uh, those indexing mechanisms are, uh, I mean, well established mechanisms in the literature. You can trust those impact factors as well as Site Score because they have a well crafted mechanism or methodology to trace the citations of the paper. I mean, what are maybe the uh, citations you are getting? That will be traced by either Scopus or maybe by Bob Science. And based on those uh, citations, they compute the impact factor. You just Google it for uh, Clarivate Analytics impact factor. Previously, that was managed by Thomson Reuters. So you get a standard formula and then standard methodology, standard mechanism to uh, arrive that particular number. So um, uh, here, uh, in this case, in global impact factor case, they, they don't have any mechanism. And they do claim that, uh, I mean, they are making some false claims stating that our journal impact factor is 5.6 point and so on. That is also another funny story that is happening. That too managed by some of the reputed uh, professors working in some of the universities and, and so on. I don't know why they are doing that. Just for fame and name they are doing, or I don't know the hidden agenda for doing that particular activity. And uh, comparatively, they are not charging much from the authors in terms of publishing their papers and so on. This is also another sad part of the story. Now, look at this particular, uh, uh, I mean, uh, um, newspaper article. Research published in PA and published journals won't count UGC panel. So I think 2020 or 21, uh, uh, I mean, report only. There are some more uh, reports also available in the literature related to uh, why UGC is not counting any of the papers that is published in PA and published startup journals and so on. So overall, what I'm trying to uh, sensitize here is why you need to have a publication. See, there are two motives. One is our promotion. Second one is getting the job. Those are the two major, or maybe third objective could be completing our thesis work or maybe submission of our thesis. These are the three major objectives at this point of time we are having in our hand. But beyond that, if you look at uh, from the ethical point of view, why we need to publish our paper, basically we are trying to disseminate our research findings to the entire global market. Uh, maybe industry or maybe policymakers or maybe some of the, uh, I mean, NGOs, if they want to implement certain schemes or maybe policies, which you are recommending part of your study, study evidence, let them take all those inputs and then they can implement it in their organization. So that's the core objective or agenda uh, of publishing our paper or maybe disseminating our knowledge to others. Second core agenda is we are trying to advance the literature. I mean, through some or other way, we are trying to advance the literature. These are the two major objectives why we should publish. 
But uh, if you look at Indian market, the objective of publishing a paper is either submitting their thesis or getting the job or uh, uh, getting promotion and so on. Uh, because of this reason, because of this pressure, what is happening is people are, uh, uh, I mean, submitting their paper to some useless journals, a pay and publish sort of journals. At the end of the day, uh, they're getting into the uh, uh, getting into the trap, and then finally, even the uh, CV is not being shortlisted by the scrutiny committee for job uh, uh, recruitment process is concerned. Even uh, when they submit their thesis, a librarian will say that this paper is, I mean, this journal is not coming under the UGC care list, so we can't accept your uh, submission and so on. There's a kind of, uh, I mean, immediate outcome they're getting. So how do we solve this issue? See, I think now UGC is working on, if you look at Western universities, they never ask their scholars to publish their paper before the submission of the thesis. So the thesis quality is assessed by the internal committee as well as external evaluation committee, not by the peer reviewers, those who are sitting in the journal uh, market and so on. So once they are done with the submission, then after that, they will go for the uh, good quality publication and so on. During this PhD journey also, they are supposed to publish some journals it may be related to thesis or it may not be related to thesis. They can do any independent research work even without adding their guide name also. This is what the practice, as far as my understanding is concerned. Uh, this has been followed in uh, most of the US or maybe UK universities and so on. But that is not the case with respect to Indian universities are concerned. By default, scholars should attach their supervisor name, whatever may be the uh, kind of research works they are doing. Otherwise, they get offended and uh, um, they will do whatever may be the things they want to do with their scholars in terms of uh, prolonging their submission or maybe in terms of stopping their submission process and so on. This sort of harassment is also happening in another side. So these are some of the sad stories or maybe sad part of our uh, Indian publication business. Now look at this particular uh, evidence. This evidence is coming from one of the nature journal. Nature is, uh, I mean, you can trust the quality of nature publication. So it's a newspaper, I mean, it's a kind of commentary paper. So there they have reported this particular uh, evidence, study reporting in predatory journals group. If you look at the, this data is, uh, I think, up to 2000 or, uh, I mean, uh, not 2000, 2019 uh, or 18, I think. So if you look at India is stopping the uh, predatory journal uh, publication. In June, India's University Grant Commission released a list of recommended journals to counter predators. Uh, but if you look at the predatory publication that is coming from Nigeria, Egypt, Iran, Turkey, Ch uh, Turkey, China, United States, Japan, Italy, and UK, comparatively, India is stopping the list, basically. Even though we are coming under middle income group, so basically uh, our group is representing them entire uh, uh, predatory journal publication market. Now, uh, you make some comments or maybe some counter arguments or maybe you can put up some questions in the forum related to whatever we have discussed so far, maybe for the last few minutes. Any comments or counter argument from your side? Any disagreement or agreement, anything, feel free to share it. Uh, dear participants, anyone have a comment or anything like a discussion form, as our resource person has said, you can post it in the chat box if you want, or you can ask directly. Anything? Uh, I don't think so, sir. Uh, I have a few questions, but I will reserve it for the end. Okay, fine, fine. No, otherwise, now also you can uh, ask the question, no problem, if it is related to the previous discussion. Yes, sir, it is related to the previous discussion. Uh, so actually, uh, whatever you have uh, cited so far and what you have spoken so far, it's quite relevant. But the pressure of publication is tremendous uh, because being in the academics, I feel the pressure all the time, you know, uh, for going for publication and all these things. And like you said, I also receive calls and WhatsApp messages and emails regarding the publication. But the pressure of publication, because all of us might not be interested in research. So the pressure of publication is, I think it is tremendous, which has led to this, you know, mushrooming of the predatory journals. And uh, but 
yeah and dipali also asked that uh, she totally agrees with you but what is the alternative the rules are such that we need to publish for appointment and promotion i quite agree sir even for the thesis pub submission also we need at least two publications and sometimes uh that's as PhD students, maybe now as a T faculty, I'm aware um, what to do and what not to do in certain areas. But as a PhD scholar, most of the st students are not aware or they are not, they, I, I mean, they are not guided in ethical issues because I think this ethical thing has come up a lot in the you know past few years. But still, many people are not well educated and well versed with the ethical issues. So, so what is the way? See, uh, that's the reason, in, uh, uh, as far as my uh, knowledge is concerned, I mean, experience with other universities are concerned. Now they are coming up with uh, something called teaching track and then research track. So if you're comfortable with publishing more papers, you come under a research track. If you're not comfortable with the publishing good quality journal papers, you take more load, uh, I mean, uh, on the side of teaching so that uh, you can be persistent uh, i mean persisted as a teaching track professor and then uh, uh, another person may be persisted as a research track professor and so on so this is a kind of uh, segregation they are trying to do it in most of the private universities but uh, whereas in government institutes uh, uh, basically we should understand why this publication pressure is coming if you look at the ranking mechanism whether it is qs ranking or the nirf ranking Everywhere, there are some proportion of points were allocated for our uh, publication data. So that is the reason why, uh, I mean, university authorities are forcing us to literally produce at least bare minimum scopus index results in a year one or two uh, papers and so on. Because of that reason, only the quality of publication is getting degraded. We are bothering about more numbers than the quality and so on. But if you look at QS ranking, they consider only Q1 or Q2 journal publications with respect to awarding some marks to your institute. So if you publish your paper in Q3, Q4, as far as purpose criteria is concerned, or some of the pay in published journals, it will not be counted. So there is no purpose of publishing your paper in any of the journals. But whereas in NIRF, they consider all the scopus index journals. So what is happening here is even a, uh, uh, I mean, better quality researcher, they try to produce at least one or two uh, papers because of department pressure or maybe university pressure and so on uh, institute um, i mean vice chancellors or maybe top level authorities they should realize this fact where we are going and then where we are heading after five years what will happen after 10 years what will happen in order to increase the quality of publication what else can be done uh, see whether we get ranking or not at the end of the day uh, we should bother about the graduate outcomes as well as where they are going to get the job uh, 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 whether we are imparting a good amount of knowledge to our students and so on. These are the few areas we should consider even in ranking also. But that part is, I mean, yes, they are considering, but the weightage is not that great actually. That great in the sense in NIRF, they are giving equal weightage for some other things. I'm not questioning that, but if you look at some of the local ranking uh, criteria or maybe some of the international ranking, even for institute perception, they are giving a lot of scores. For this sort of things, we are not getting any marks. Again, if you look at uh, our promotion criteria and other things as far as UGC is concerned, nowhere they are counting uh, student feedback or nowhere they are counting how many papers I have taught so far. But uh, I'm, I'm meant for, uh, I mean, my profession is teaching, but teaching role is uh, these days, uh, I mean, less emphasized in terms of promotion or anything. Whatever maybe the panel we are getting, they always uh, question us in terms of our past publication track and so on. But I hope the things are uh, getting changed, not in, in a fast pace, uh, pace manner, but slowly it is getting changed. I think the present vice chairman of UGC, uh, uh, you could have seen the uh, UGC, I think, draft regulation 2022 uh, for PhD program and other uh, uh, programs. So there, they are not giving much emphasis towards uh, journal publication and so on. That's what I came to know uh, um, through some of my colleagues and scholars. Maybe in the near future, they may be removing this uh, publication criteria for awarding the PhD and so on. They can come up with some other criteria as well. They can come up with some other criteria as well, but I'm not sure uh, what else they're going to do. But again, if you remove this publication criteria, what will happen is simply they submit something and then they will leave the, I mean, they get the degree and then they'll leave the place.
that will also the reason why i mean ugc has brought this publication better is to enhance the phd output quality now if you remove this publication uh, criteria again the quality may go down but who will ensure this quality i don't know maybe we can think of creating uh, similar to iqac or something maybe some panel or maybe internal panel or uh, external panel who can evaluate and then who can pass through the uh, i mean research thesis work submitted by the uh, students and so on but ultimately the ethics is missing even at the supervisor level so unless he or she has some ethics or maybe follow some ethical standards we can question anything so we may not be able to uh, bring the changes uh, whatever may be the changes we are trying to bring it to the system so it's a kind of a manageable answer only it's not a yes or no sort of answer i know that uh, even i'm not satisfied with my own answer but i don't know you, you have to think it over and you have to tell me what else can be done in terms of uh, avoiding the sort of problems it's a system issue basically sir actually i cannot speak for everyone else but i can speak for myself yeah. uh, i am not a very research oriented person uh, yeah I, I can do it uh, if i put my mind into it i can do it but uh, what i'm more interested is in teaching and you know uh, i can go for workshops i can go for any other things but publication is just not my forte one of my forties so yeah. the problem what i find with my my me is like i will not be able to produce something in 3 years so for someone it might be very easy to produce in one year like two three papers but for me even in three years to come up with one paper is very difficult and yes the, uh, there is diti borwa ma'am she has said that for quality papers in social sciences takes time to even yes. write it needs 6 to 12 months time then to get published it may need another one or two years so we are under tremendous pressure so sir i feel that in some way if uh, okay for phd it is fine we need to publish one or two but the pressure of you know uh, publishing while we are in the college for a promotion is something that is uh, you know uh, a roadblock for most of us and uh, that actually compels sometimes you know to do certain you know unethical things I, i'm not saying uh, everyone is doing it i'm just saying that in certain cases it happens and we don't know how to get over this entire thing so that, that that is true only that's the reason i said uh, in private universities they are bringing this research track and uh, 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 i mean teaching track of session same logic can be implemented even in government institutes also and for example at our university we give a lot of emphasis to research so here our workload is much much lesser than some of the private or maybe even central universities uh, uh, i mean situated in india but uh, this is not the case with respect to other uh, colleges as well as other universities right so yeah that's what i'm saying no government should think about this uh, see uh, you may be a good teacher i may be a bad teacher you may be a good researcher i may be a bad uh, researcher you can't expect everything from the same person right so i don't know uh, how to solve this issue uh, but if you look at us universities they have uh, teaching track as well as research track in teaching track they uh, expect you to crack really top rate journal publications and they give a lot of uh, emphasis towards that uh, for uh, teaching track you have to teach i mean you have to do um, better teaching that's it uh, one of the best example i can bring it here is for example if you look at isb indian school of business um, i mean globally uh, one of the recognized uh, business school uh, situated in hyderabad so they do have a teaching track position as well as a, um, research track position so the full time assistant professors are uh, research track and the teaching track professors they give a name called the clinical assistant professor and so on or practice uh, assistant professor and so on so they expect uh, them to uh, do more of uh, teaching i mean good teaching usually the people will be coming from industry background they carry at least 10 years of uh, industry experience and then they share it in the class so that they expect them to do a lot of uh, justice to the teaching part than the research part but if the person is recruited under the research track that is normal assistant professor category means they expect them to publish papers in top 5 or top 10 journals i don't know which list they are following but if you look at their uh, journal publication 
if you are coming under marketing they target only general of marketing general of academia of marketing science general of marketing research and so on this is out of journals they uh, publish their research outputs so likewise even in degree colleges even in uh, uh, i mean government universities we can also implement this particular system up to some extent this can this can uh, uh, mitigate this particular problem called predatory journal publication or maybe pay and publish uh, uh, culture and so on uh, this is one of the simplest uh, uh, change we can bring it to our system but uh, ugc has to come up with something related to this particular aspect so probably you can also write some email to the ugc i mean ugc chairman uh, in terms of expressing your concerns at the degree college level or maybe uh, state university level and so on definitely will listen to our concerns or maybe uh, uh, apprehensions based on that you can come up with some other uh, proposals and so on. that is very much possible yeah yes. yes sir but as colleges we are actually very much overworked you know classes and publications are if yeah, are, i know that i know it's that. like True. we are like overworked and sometimes we are even understaffed so sometimes yeah. it does not work in our favor to you know move both ways so you see not only overworked or uh, understaffed you think about the journal subscription whether your college is subscribing any journals whether the affiliated university is subscribing uh, uh, any journals where you can go through some of the recently published research papers based on that you can come up with some research problem and then do some research work whether your college is providing additional support or maybe resources in terms of doing all those activities i'm not sure you may be having those sort of support system not everywhere uh, i mean uh, there are cases where in degree colleges they have only one computer system for the entire institute that to uh, available in the principal room and the people often uh, i mean um, i mean they have some apprehension in terms of uh, uh, knocking the door of the principal also that is also there if that is the case how do they access the papers so we can ask the faculty to buy their own laptop or their own mobile phone in terms of accessing the research papers right are you getting my point so lack of resources is one of the major concern so that much only i could say based on my uh, little knowledge on what is happening in some of the degree colleges and so on because i also started my career with one of the simple uh, arts and science college where i did my bba degree so i know uh, like throughout the day five day i mean five days every day five sessions even those sort of uh, teaching also sometimes we may have to do that is a case where do you get time so result some of the concerns anyway that's fine yeah i i completely agree with uh, professor dd uh, yes in i mean if you are targeting some of the really top rate journals or maybe good quality journals it takes time for example you have to spend at least 3 months or 2 months to complete a paper then after that again revision resubmission then again it will it may be rejected then again you have to look for another journal so it required lot of patience and time in terms of tracking your paper so my suggestion for mitigating this particular issue is you create as many as possible pipelines every time we should have at least 10 or 15 pipelines pipelines in the sense some projects may be in uh, in the stage of uh, completion some project some papers may be in, uh, in the stage of submitting into a journal in some uh, uh, cases we may be starting the process in some cases we may be in the data collection in some cases we may be in the process of analyzing the data so like that if you have some 10 to 15 pipelines every year at least you we would be able to crack one or two journal papers that is very much possible and uh, with the help of collaboration with the help of collaboration you would be able to do that for example i may not be good at everything she may not be good at everything so wherever you are uh, uh, good at something you try to catch hold of some people okay you tell them that okay i'm good at collecting the data because i have my own student population or maybe industry population easily i can get the primary data or i'm good at uh, sourcing the secondary uh, data or i'm good at uh, collecting the uh, reviews posted in different sites and so on with the help of python programming or r programming so you please help us to uh, uh, i mean uh, finalize the research problem as well as you please help us to understand the uh, entire paper writing process i'll take care of the entire data analysis part you take care of the entire uh, introduction writing part as well as the theory development and then discussion writing part so something like that if you are able to create some three or four 
uh, uh, collaborative team members, easily you can uh, track at least one or two papers in a year. So it's not that everyone is uh, good at everything. So that's how even the US authors also publishing their papers uh, every year, maybe five or 10 top quality uh, journal papers and so on. Yeah, Pranab sir, trying to say something? Pranav Saikya sir, are you trying to say something or uh, if you was, uh, if we are not, you are not properly audible, can you type your question in the chat box? I have Pranav Saikya sir. Pranav Saikya sir, apni huni se, apna zodi kiba kobole. Sorry, Pranav Saikya sir. I think he may be he may be speaking somewhere. Yeah, yeah, Maybe the admin yeah, yeah. can mute him. So yeah. Pranam Sakya sir, kindly mute yourself. Okay, fine. So now we'll get into the core concept. Whatever we have discussed is uh, some some form of general discussions because I want to sensitize something here. So that's the reason I took this long to discuss everything. So now try to understand open access publishing in the recent uh, uh, context. Uh, open access publishing or open access publication is uh, it's a buzzword among the industry. Sorry, among the academicians. So they think that open access publishing means you put up anything and they will, I mean, accept your paper by pay, paying some money. I mean, open access fee, they, you get the acceptance at the end of the day. Uh, your paper may be listed in Scopus or maybe some other indexing mechanism and so on. That is not true. That is not always true. Even in some other top rate journals also, they do publishers uh, open access papers. I'll show you some of the journals, like exclusive open access journals, as well as some of the commercial journals, but they do accept open access publication and so on. We'll have some calibration regarding this a little later. Now try to understand what is the meaning of open access. So in simple sense, open access refers to freely available digital online information. Open access scholarly literature is free of charge and often carries less restrictive copyright and licensing barriers than traditionally published works for both the users and the authors and so on. So in simple sense, open access in the sense, I mean, open access is nothing but whatever may be the resources you are trying to retrieve it from the particular source of reference. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, without any uh, issue, you will be able to retrieve that particular content from the particular source of reference. So if that is the case, I mean, without any restriction, if you are able to download or if you are able to print it, if you are able to share it among your colleagues or maybe among your students, means that is referred as open access publishing, basically, or in simple sense, open access. Now try to understand what is open access publishing or open access. So another version of same definition is open access is the process of making published academic articles freely and permanently available online so that anyone anywhere can read and build upon this research. So without any restrictions, if you are able to download, if you are able to download the papers from any of the publishing houses or from any of the journals means that is referred as open access publishing, right? For example, I'm just visiting to one of the uh, journal house. Let me show you that. So Journal of Management is one of the premier journal in management domain. One of the premier journal in management domain. I'm just visiting this journal of management. Now look at the all issues, or maybe you can look at the online first articles. So this journal is having an impact factor of 13.508. This impact factor is given by Clarivit Analytics. This impact factor is given by Clarivit Analytics. Five-year impact factor is 18.01, so on and so on. Now, if you look at uh, the published papers, for example, my university is not subscribing this particular journal. So when I when I want to read this particular paper, when I click PDF, I may not be able to download this particular paper. 
because I'm not subscribing. I mean, my university is not subscribing this particular journal for the scholars as well as faculty members. When you click access option, it says that purchase content 24 hours online access to download content. You have to pay $37. Uh, dollar. Uh, if you want to permanently download this paper again, there also you may have to pay close to forty dollar and so on because I'm not having any access with respect to this particular journal as well as this particular article. Now, if you look at the same journal, there are some papers published under the open access category. Just look at this symbol CC by attribution symbol. Now, here you can also see this symbol, right? the lock is open which means that this paper can be accessed by anyone from anywhere across the globe even if your university or if your degree college or if your institute is not subscribing this particular channel for your consumption purpose for example now i'm just clicking this pdf file i could able to open this pdf file here they say that just look at the just look at the symbol here this is nothing but creative commons attribution symbol we'll have some discussion about what is creative commons uh, attribution and so on later later now you can go through this paper you can freely share this paper with anyone even you can use make use of this particular article for your own classroom teaching purpose that is very much possible so this is referred as open access publishing are you getting my point Able to understand? Able to understand? No response, not even single response. Yeah, yeah. So similarly, you name any journal, you name any journal, there they do have, there they do have this open access publishing business. For example, now I'm visiting Journal of Applied Psychology. This is considered as one of the premier journal in the domain of psychology. Now I'm just clicking this read this journal. Again, my university is not subscri subscribing this particular journal for our consumption purpose. I'm just clicking. I'm just clicking get access. It says check access or purchase PDF by paying $14.95. Now, if you look at this particular article, it says that free to read a, comp a comprehensive examination of the cross validity of Pareto optimal versus fixed weight selection systems in the uh, by objective selection context and so on. I'm just opening this paper. Now it says that it can be freely downloadable. Now, if you open this paper, you will be able to access it because they kept it under open access publishing category. Are you getting my point? Make sense? So. Fine. I'll, I'll, finally, I'll show you one more example. For example, this organizational research method journal is one of the top eight journal in the domain of methods. Now, if you go to this journal, uh, the impact factor is 8.2. Five year impact factor is loan point something. I'm just clicking online first. Again, my university is not subscribing this particular journal. See, if you look at this particular journal, this is not available to me. This paper is not available for me. But if you look at this particular paper, this is published under the Creative Commons licensing category. So anybody can download this paper from your end as well as my end and so on. Now. I'm just sharing this paper link in the chat window. You just try it from your end, whether you are able to download this PDF or not. Just let me know. But if you do the same thing for this particular paper, I don't think so. You will be able to download the paper from your side unless you have the subscription. Are you getting my point? This paper may not be available for you. I mean, the second link may not be available for you, but the first link is available for everyone whether you are sitting at uh, northeastern part or uh, southern part or western part whether you are associated with any institute or not associated with any of the institute still you'll be able to download that particular paper 
that's how you can uh, understand this particular logic makes sense Sorry. clear okay now i'll move on to the next part so these days in journals also they do say that article publishing charts please try to understand paid journal is completely different from open access publishing for open access publishing yes we are supposed to pay some money because they are creating the printed version of the journal output as well as online version of the journal output what they do is simple copy uh, uh, editing process and then they also manage the review process and so on and in terms of downloading our own paper we may have to pay some money in order to compensate this they ask you to submit some article processing charges in the form of open access publication this is completely different from paid journal in paid journal publishing criteria what will happen is you pay this much of money next day itself i'll accept your paper that is paid journal are you getting my point but if you submit your paper to this sort of journal once the paper is accepted once the paper is accepted they give this open access provision in every uh, i mean uh, uh, databases they have different options green open access and then uh, 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 i mean bold open access there are different criteria they are trying to keep it in their website so depending upon the option whatever may be the option you are opting for your paper you may have to pay some money this will not be counted as paid journal are you getting my point so you can make some comment stating that he has published a paper in open access journal by paying some money it's a paid journal you also submit your paper you will also get the acceptance that is not the case that is not true that is not true at all make sense that is what apc now try to understand different open access licenses or open licenses so if you look at open licenses we have close to 6 or 7 types of licenses one is cc by attribution before that you have something called public domain license then you have cc by share alike cc by no derivatives cc by non commercial cc by non commercial and share alike then cc by non commercial and no derivatives now we'll have some discussion about this particular licensing categories so if any one of the paper is published under the public domain license if any one of the paper is published under the public domain license means need not to pay anything need not to pay anything to download your paper you can print it even without citing that paper you can share it among your people even for commercial purpose you can use it that's how you can understand the meaning of this public domain license now if you look at if you look at the criteria to understand the different types and nature of the licenses just look at the first column copy and publish copy and publish means whether you are allowed to copy the content and republish it or not that is the meaning attribution record attribution record in the sense whether we have to provide some citation for that particular paper or not that is nothing but attribution record then commercial use commercial use is nothing but for example bagona college is conducting this particular program let us assume that they have charged some thousand rupees from each and every uh, participants those who are attending this particular session which means that it's a commercial activity pure commercial activity even if you charge one rupee from the participant it should be treated as commercial activity whether for commercial activity also whether uh, i mean i'm supposed to use that particular paper i mean whether i'm free to use that particular paper or not that is nothing but commercial use then you have modify and adapt modify and adapt is nothing but whether i have the liberty to modify the content that is coming under this particular license whether i can re-adapt or repurpose that particular paper according to my convenience and so on that is nothing but modify and adapt then you have another criteria called changing the license changing the license means for example now i got some so uh, resource from public domain license i got another resource that is coming in a cc by license now by integrating both the licenses whether uh, uh, i mean i could able to change the license or not yes that is possible in the case of merging or integrating public domain content with the cc by share alike content but not with other content so that is nothing but changing the license now you try to understand something more about how do we infer all those uh, licenses and then um, i mean meaning of uh, all those types of licenses 
now again i'll go back to the paper i mean the paper which i have shared just in front of the screen uh, maybe five minutes ago now look at this particular paper just look at this particular paper what is the type of license here they have mentioned cc cc any answer cc by attribution just look at the symbol now come back to the ppt this is nothing but cc by this is nothing but cc by right cc by attribution we say it as cc by attribution what are the things you can do with respect to that particular paper you can copy and publish you can copy the content you can keep it in your reading material or notes whatever may be the content you are preparing for your students or maybe for workshop that is possible you have to provide the attribution you have to provide the attribution in the sense you have to provide the source of the reference i mean the citation details of the reference then what else can be done commercial use you can use this particular paper you can use this particular paper even for commercial activity even if you are giving some fdp training or maybe some fdp training by charging some money from the participant even for that particular purpose you can make use of this particular paper that is possible then you have modify and adapt whether i'm free to copy paste this content in my reading material or not yes you can also do that provider you have to provide the attribution of this particular source of reference apart from that there are no other restriction then what else can be done whether you are permitted to change the license yes you can change the license also whatever may be the license you want to give it for this particular content whatever may be the content you are repurposing or whatever may be the content you are recreating with the help of this particular journal reference that is also possible so these are the things you can do with the help of this particular license now getting some understanding uh, uh, about this cc by attribution license now look at another license this is also cc by only cc by just look at this particular license let me open this paper and then we'll have some discussion here they kept different symbol can you can you look at carefully look at the symbol what is the meaning of the symbol what is the meaning of this symbol cc by i'm just zooming it cc by nc no so now look at the ppt cc by nc means cc by non commercial so what are the things you can do with respect to that particular paper just look at you can copy and publish you have to provide the citation but you can't use that particular paper for commercial activities only for the non commercial activities you can use that particular reference make sense then you can also modify and adapt the paper you can also change the license that is also possible except using it for non i mean commercial activities or commercial purposes you can do everything with respect to this particular paper are you getting my point make sense yes sir yeah. what happened no response yes sir it makes sense yes sir dp bolvas says yes sir okay so yeah here i have given um, another round of uh, explanation as well as meaning for 
each and every uh, licenses and then licensing category. I'll also share this PPT with the organizer by, uh, I mean, looking at the PPT content, you'll be able to understand everything. So CC by attribution means let let's others distribute, remix, tweak, and build upon your work, even commercially, as long as they credit you for the original creation. This is the most accommodating of licenses offered, recommended for maximum dissemination and use of licensed materials and so on. CC by share like means let's others remix, tweak, and build upon your work even for commercial purposes, as long as they credit you and license their new creations under the identical terms. This is particularly important if your work also includes other people's materials licensed through the Creative Commons and so on. Make sense? Same logic is applicable to others. For example, we have seen a paper that is coming under CC by NC, right? Here, just look at the explanation. Let's others remix, tweak, and build upon your work non-commercially. And although the new works must also acknowledge you and be non-commercial, they don't have to license their derivative works on the same terms and so on. So that's the meaning of this particular license. So this CC by NC, SC, CC by NC, CC by ND, and the CC by NC, ND are most restrictive in nature, but CC by SC, CC by attribution, and then CC public domain are like most free in nature, free in the sense, most less restrictive in nature, which means that you are free to use those sort of materials for your own consumption as well as for your own teaching and learning process I mean, for teaching as well as learning process. So, so the conclusion is, the conclusion is, this is nothing but open access. Now, I just want to play a small video to further understand what is open access publishing with Elsevier. Here, I'm not trying to do any, uh, what you call the uh, marketing or maybe uh, I'm not promoting Elsevier publishing here. So I'm just trying to show you what is open access publishing with respect to some of the some of the reputed journal houses like Elsevier. Now let me share this video. Just a minute. Just give me a second. I uh, just share this particular tab for uh, sharing the voice along with the video. I hope you are able to see the YouTube window. Now I'll play it. I hope you'll be able to hear the voice as well. The choice to publish open access with Elsevier is yours. Your motivations may vary, but the goal is the same. To make your work immediately and freely available to everyone, everywhere. No matter where you are in the publication journey, we've got you covered. There are a lot of predatory publishers these days. I want to work with a real journal. Join a growing community of researchers who publish open access with us. You will benefit from publishing in quality journals with rigorous peer review standards. And we will connect you with expert editors and reviewers. I want to find a journal that is a good fit for my work and one that publishes open access. Whatever your research area, we've got open access journals across every scientific discipline with open access options that provide fast and efficient peer review. 
I've never published open access before. Will I get help? If I have questions along the way, receive expert support throughout submission, during peer review, and post acceptance. Benefit from the agreements we have with institutions around the world, and take advantage of an easy-to-use editorial system to make the publication process as smooth and seamless as possible. I want my article to be easy for other researchers to find and free for them to read. When you publish open access with Elsevier, millions of researchers around the globe will be able to find your work and read it without charge. Our journals are indexed in databases like Scopus, DOAJ, Web of Science, and PubMed Central. Your article will be published on Science Direct, the number one research platform in the world. We will ensure that your article remains discoverable and accessible, no matter how much time passes. How do I know my work is making an impact? Access tools that measure the impact of your research, including citations and downloads. Track who's talking about your article in the news and on social media with Plum X metrics. Promote reproducibility and advance open science with the option to publish articles on research objects. When you publish open access with Elsevier, you get the attention you deserve. We will support you throughout your publication journey, every step of the way. I hope you got something. I hope you got something out of this uh, video, right? What is open access uh, with Elsevier? Let me show you one more link from the same site, Elsevier site. Uh, it's a content, basically, a text content. With the help of this father, you'll be able to understand something more about what is open access. If you look at this uh, screen, I mean, uh, Elsevier site, um, here they are giving some details about some details about open access options and open access journals, open access books, and then open archive agreements and so on. If you look at this uh, publishing open access, See, here they're giving an option called gold open access option. Then they have something called green open access option. So these are the two major options they are providing to the authors of the papers. So you name any journal, you name any journal that is coming under Elsevier, whether it is pure open access journal or commercial journal, it doesn't matter, right? In both the cases, this particular logic is applicable. Mainly, this logic is applicable in the case of commercial journals. There are some exclusive open access journals also available in the market. For example, let me show you one of the journal. Page Open is a complete open access journal. They publishes only open access papers under this particular journal. Are you getting my point? So here, I mean, uh, without any access issue, you can, you can access almost all of the papers that is coming from this Sage Open uh, Access Journal. For example, I'm just visiting this July, September 2022 issue, and uh, I have a paper here, the, uh, I mean, licensing category, uh, which was given over here is CC by, here CC by, 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 CC by 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 everything is CC by only, which means that this particular journal publishes only open access papers. So whatever may be the papers you are submitting, once you get the acceptance, you will uh, you'll be asked to pay some money. You, you are supposed to pay some money. Basically, it's an open access journal without any subscription option without any subscription option they are publishing your work you can also download this particular article at free of cost so that you get more visibility your paper get more visibility so that people will be interested to read your paper without having the subscription in turn that will increase the visibility of the paper in turn that will also increase the citation count in turn that will also increase the impact factor of the journal and so on because this journal is one of the recently started journal maybe two to three years ago they have started but now the 
uh, impact factor is 2.032 and so on. So this is the way how they are growing the, um, I mean, growing their journal business and so on. This is complete open access journal. Now, journal of management, we have seen, right? That is not complete open access journal. There they do publish some of the papers under open access category. So there this logic is applicable. The logic is nothing but green access option, gold open access option and so on. So what is gold open access? Just look at this. Publish in an open access journal or publish in a uh, journal which supports open access. That is hybrid. Journal of management is a hybrid sort of journal. Sage Open is a complete open access journal. In Elsewhere also they do have complete open access journals. Then use. The final version of the published journal article is made freely available immediately to everyone. Authors can choose between a commercial and non-commercial creative common users license. Anything you can give. You can select non-commercial license or commercial license. Anything you can um, keep it in your paper. That is possible after the acceptance. The publishing cost are covered by the author or by their institution or funding body or society on their behalf, typically in the form of an article publishing charge or other types of fees. Authors can check with their institution whether funding for their APC is available and so on. There are some institutions where they are taking care of this APC charges, part of their uh, faculty professional development activity. And uh, if you get those sort of funding, simply you get it from your institute and then you pay it to the journal so that your paper will be publicly available to the entire uh, community, I mean, entire reader community. This is nothing but gold open access. They do have something called, here the APC charges will be much, much higher than the green open access. In green open access, what they are doing is, if an article was published under the subscription model, it can be shared in the following ways by linking to the article by self archiving a version of the article in line with our sharing policy accepted manuscript should attach a cc by nc nd user license authors retain the right to reuse their articles for a wide range of purposes fee is no fee is payable by the author as publishing costs are covered by subscriptions so this logic is nothing but you can link your article or you can self archive your article in your website itself need not to pay anything for this but you have to attach the license called cc by nc nd user license this is what a green option in some journals even for this green or uh, open access also they do charge some fee they do charge some fee but in elsewhere they are not doing that so what is the benefit of going for this particular option option i mean uh, benefit is you are self archiving your article maybe in your university website or institute website right public can freely access your paper the preprint version or maybe the uh, final version of the paper at free of cost without subscribing that particular journal in turn you are disseminating your knowledge without any restriction so that's the benefit of going for this green open access option and so on now if you look at mdpa the entire journals published under mdpa publishing houses are complete open access only they charge somewhere close to 1000 to 2000 uh, uh, francs uh, uh, i mean currency uh, you have to make that particular payment for example if you look at this sustainability journal this is one of the top journal in mdpa which is having 3.889 impact factor now if you look at the apc charges for the, this particular journal somewhere they might have mentioned it let me show you that yeah article processing charge so all, all articles published in sustainability are published in full open access and article processing charge of 2000 chf that is swiss france applies to papers accepted after peer review if you convert this 2000 chf to inr you'll get to know the money you are supposed to pay 1,69,139 rupees to publish your paper in sustainability whether your paper is uh, accept, I mean, uh, accepted, um, uh, rejected means you need not to pay anything. If your paper is accepted, by default, you are supposed to pay this much of money. Otherwise, they don't publish your paper in this particular journal because it's an open access journal, complete open access publishing house. They publishes only open access papers in their journal. 
without any subscription for example i'm just going to sustainability journal page without any subscription i can open any of the uh, i mean papers from this particular journal for example i'm just clicking this paper it says open access article now i'm just clicking download pdf from your side also i'm just sharing this link in the chat window from your side also you will be able to download this particular paper without subscribing this particular journal and so on for example i could able to open this paper now here they say that just look at this cc by attribution copyright 2022 by the authors license mdpa switzerland this article is an open access article distributed under the terms and conditions of the creative commons attribution cc by license so which means that you can freely use i mean make use of this particular paper for your own reading as well as for your teaching purpose makes sense getting some clarity about what is open access publishing do you need any more clarification regarding this participants any any questions or comments at this point of time now able to distinguish the journals which is supporting open access publishing the journals which is coming under complete open access criteria and then the type of licenses given in some of the journals like starting from cc by attribution to cc by ncrnd now getting some clarity over all those steps i think sir the participants are having a fair idea by now i think they will need to i had no not dt borwa says i had no knowledge regarding this earlier oh okay maybe dt ma'am you will be like giving a little clarity right now but it will take some time i guess to have a complete grasp over the matter see you can look at this open access uh, publishing journals from another perspective uh for example you are saying that uh, here we are not having time to do the research and so on um you can you can very well refer this set of journals because without any subscription you will be able to download the papers even for your own classroom teaching purpose you can make use of all those references you identify some of the journals where they are completely uh, free to the public in terms of downloading the papers at the same time you identify some of the top tier journals in your domain for example you are teaching economics or let us assume that you are teaching uh, uh, principles of management for bba students there i am going to teach a theory on um, something related to motivation now you look for some recently published motivation related paper from journal of management if that paper is if that paper is coming under cc by attribution license means you just download and then you try to integrate that particular reference along with your teaching material so that the students will be able to get the recent output i mean the recent knowledge that is existing in the literature if you look at the entire textbook textbooks are at least bare minimum 20 years old content i mean textbook content is at least 20 years old one the reason is the textbooks are written on the basis of the journal papers so uh, uh, if that is the case straight away you can not exactly completely replacing textbook with the journal papers you can supplement you can supplement journal papers as one of the reading material in your course or maybe in your day to day activities through this way we can reduce this gap of 20 years or maybe uh, 30 years and so on are you getting my point even from the teaching learning point of view you can make use of this open access papers now um, some uh, i just want to share some of the online resources for research for example open lectures plenty of open lecture videos uh, videos are available from mit open courseware open el swayam platform nptel platform and etc now ugc has created a new platform called ugc resources.ac.in something there they have given some 25 different courses with the regional language sub, i mean subtitle option and so on so a lot of plenty of resources are available within indian uh, i mean databases with the help of that you can learn anything with the no time without the support of your mentor or maybe without the support of your supervisor and so on. only thing is you need to have internet access you need to have some smart devices in your hand that's it second thing is 
with the help of open lectures from the teaching learning point of view for example tomorrow i'm going to teach something on uh, demand curve now uh, what you can do is you can identify some demand curve lecture videos from any of these sources you send that particular video content or maybe reading material to your students well in advance during the class you have some discussion among the students about that particular video content about that particular um, i mean topic so that you will be able to go beyond remember and understand level of your uh, bloom's taxa taxonomy levels are concerned with the help of this you can also you can also enhance the learning process of your student this you can do it with the help of by referring some other open lecture videos that is coming from mit source open yale or i mean open yale source swayam source and then NPL, nptl sources and so on otherwise simply you can also go to this site you can also simply go to this site let me show you you just type ndl in google you will get this national digital library of india here you just type demand curve quick search I'm not getting much simply i'll use economics the keyword for my search and then click video so here i'm getting a lot of videos from different sources so here there is a, a video on economic models there is a video on introduction to economics from khan academy uh, and then uh, um, there are there are some more videos also coming now you can supplement this particular video uh, a part of your teaching and learning process uh, to your students with the help of that you'll be able to enhance their learning process if you need some text content just filter filter it with the help of this text button you get only the text related material from this particular source this is one of the easiest way how you can look for some other free sources for your own research as well as for teaching purpose fine then you have some other open source softwares if you need more details about some of the open source softwares, my kind recommendation is you go to my site. This is my site. Um, and my site, if you go to resources page, let me show you. I think some firewall issue. I don't know the reason. Yeah, just go to resources. Here, I have compiled set of uh, open source softwares. Just look at open source softwares for data analysis. If you go through this, you will be able to understand the kind of softwares that is available in the literature for your own teaching as well as for your own research purpose. For example, Zamo is one of the open source software, GA based, that is graphical user interface based open source software. JASP, JASP is another open source software. For example, since you are all coming from degree college background, you may not be having enough money or sufficient fund to procure softwares like SPSS or some other commercial softwares for your own learning as well as research as well as for your teaching purpose. But you can also make use of the sort of open source software. So I did a small write up on open source software and then with the help of open source software, how we can also do the national saving. I did some cost estimation just by comparing IBM SPSS version, MATLAB standard, and then IBM SPSS modeler. And uh, it is coming around close to 2000 crores per annum expenditure uh, made by our Indian institutes, including premier institutions to some of the low tier colleges. If you save this much of money to your nation, with the help of this, you can build four different central universities in a year that is possible with the help of some 500 crore investment that is very much possible or you can create at least 10 different degree colleges with the help of this particular investment are you getting my point so uh, for more details you just go through this small write-up so the reason why i'm showing this here is with the help of using open source softwares you can bring down the budget for your institute in turn you can bring down the budget for your entire nation in turn, you can do some national saving. Not only for using the open source software, even you can also look for some of the open source textbooks that is available in the market. With the help of that, 
need not to recommend and refer any of the commercial textbooks so that you can cut down the budget of your student expenditure at the same time you can also cut down the expenditure of your library expenditure in turn you can do uh, justice to the nation by saving i mean by doing this particular national saving so that's the reason i'm showing all those references here then um there are some open source softwares available just now i have shown the sources then open source databases for example if you go to for example if you go to doaj doaj is nothing but directory of open access journals here you type the keyword for example i'm just typing job satisfaction as a keyword i get articles which is published under open source i mean open access journals as well as i get uh, articles from uh, um, uh, hybrid journals where the paper was published under the open access category this is how you can look for the i mean journals as well as some of the um, what you call the papers by looking at this particular doaj that is nothing but a directory of open access journals similarly you have something called doap this is nothing but directory of open access books so here you can find out some of the open access books i mean freely available books for your own teaching and learning for example i'm just typing economics as a keyword here just look at the kind of content i'm getting once i click the search button taking some time just a minute yeah now look at i'm getting some of the books like 10 crises australian economics re examined let me use business economics as a keyword taking some more time yeah see uh, i'm getting a lot of references uh, when i used this business economics as a keyword so i i got 345 pages of references you just go through it you will get some books for example you can also filter it in english itself i'm getting 2301 reference here you get chapters as well as the complete book you can also select the Uh, uh, i mean publishing sources for example within economics i'm getting 264 references through this way you can filter the uh, search from taylor and francis i'm getting 114 from springer nature i'm getting 55 from oxford university press i'm getting 22 let me click oxford press so this all the books i'm getting at free of cost from oxford press itself so this is a way how you can uh, look for some of the free text books for your own teaching here need not to have any access in terms of downloading these books in terms of sharing it with your students simply you can share it in the form of a web link that is very much possible then you have uh, university level digital resources uh, for example you visit some of the western or maybe uk or australian universities website there they are providing some of the guidelines in terms of accessing some of the open source materials that is also possible for understanding the writing resources you can um, visit this particular page you can visit this particular page academic phrase bank there is a there is a link available from university of manchester so there they have created something called academic phrase bank so with the help of this for example you are writing a paper i mean journal paper and you are trying to introduce something so what should be there in the introduction section of the manuscript and then suppose if you are trying to establish the importance of the topic for the world or society so how do you start that particular statement so here there are some guidelines similarly for uh, referring to sources describing methods reporting results discussing findings and then writing conclusions for everything you have some references here for more details just visit this page so with the help of this you can understand something more about academic writing so often people get some confusion over 
whether the journal is listed in web of science whether the journal is listed in scopus and so on so how do we uh, do this particular checking you just visit this web of science group site there you just type the journal name if that particular journal is coming from this web of science listing or indexing means you can say that this particular journal is indexed in web of science database for example i'm just typing web of science web of science now i'm trying to check whether this journal is listed in um, web of science indexing so here you have documents I'm just selecting search web of science. See here, you can select the journal. Publication titles here. You just type the journal name. I'm just trying to check whether this journal is indexed in uh, web of science category there is a journal called current psychology i'm just clicking search so this journal is indexed in web of science for example here uh, i'm getting journal impact factor jcr category and then category quartile uh, rank and then overall rank and so on according to journal citation reports if this particular detail is coming from web of science searching mechanism means you can say that this particular journal is being listed in Web of Science. So how do we do the same with respect to Scopus? You just go to Scopus database. Scopus database. Here what you do is, here what you do is, just select source title and then type the journal name, current psychology, click search. So I'm getting some, I mean, uh, it is considered as a searching keyword, actually. Um, just a minute. Yeah, source title only. Um, Pretty sure about that. Yeah, see, I'm getting some paper reference from current psychology. Now, when I click this current psychology, it says that Scopus coverage is from 1981 to 82, then from 1984 to present, this journal is being covered under the Scopus database. I mean, listed in Scopus database. This is the ISSN number, ePrint ISSN. Um, then you have the site score, SGR uh, uh, score, and then SNP 2021 uh, um, score, and so on. So this is how you get the details from Scopus database. Now you can verify that this particular journal is indexed in Scopus database. This is the way how you can do the verification. Fine. Now uh, some general recommendations to red flag uh, uh, to spot the predatory journals. When in doubt, check Jeffrey Beals list to spot scammers. There is a list called Jeffrey Beals list. You go there, you copy paste the journal name before you submit your paper to that particular journal. If that journal name is appearing in Jeffrey Beals list means it's a predatory journal. No standard identifiers like ISSN and DOAs. Suppose if the journal is not giving DOA number for the published references means I think you have to question them why you are not providing DOA. If they have IS, I mean, if they don't have ISSN number, you can't trust. Like, I mean, uh, it's not a journal, basically. It's not a journal. Then the scope of the journal is too wide. For example, I have seen some journals like International Journal of Management, Commerce, Engineering, Economics, Science, and so on. So if you get this sort of titles, which means that it's a predatory journal, sort of journal. Then no transparency about article processing charges. If nothing has been mentioned in the website with respect to article processing charges, but in, uh, formally 
they will send some official communication in the form of email or mobile messages stating that you have to pay this much of money in order to uh, uh, publish your paper in so and so journal and so on. If that is the case, again, you can doubt that particular journal credibility. Poor online presence. The journal is not being listed or uh, um, handled by some of the top class publishing houses like Taylor and Francis, Elsevier, uh, Sage, Emerald, uh, Indescience, uh, um, uh, I mean other publishing houses and so on, reputed publishing houses and so on. If that is the case, you must doubt that particular journal. Then the journal is not well indexed. The journal is not been indexed in, uh, not even in uh, uh, Scopus. So if that is the case, definitely you have to doubt that particular journal credibility. Then officials of the journal use email addresses of a free email supplier like Gmail and so on. If that is the case, definitely you have to doubt the credibility of the journal. So these are the few ways how you can also red flags to spot some of the predatory publishers or maybe predatory journals and so on. And if you want to select the right journal for your paper publication, there are some links I have given here. You please go through them. You will get some idea about how to spot the right journal for your journal. In every, uh, I mean, publishing houses, now they have something called journal finder. For example, if you go to this Elsevier journal finder, go to this Elsevier journal finder, there you just copy paste your title of the paper and then copy paste your abstract of the paper, you will get some suggestions. You will get some suggestions within the, uh, um, I mean, uh, journal finder. Based on the, uh, those suggestions, you can also submit your paper to uh, Elsevier journals. Similarly, in Springer also, they do have this mechanism. I'm not sure about Emerald and Taylor and Francis. I have not seen anything, but that is very much possible. You can also look at this journal citation report where you get the details of the journal impact factor. Uh, because this journal citation report uh, reports are produced by um, what you call Clarivit Analytics. Previously, this was managed by Thompson Reuters. With the help of this also, you can come up with something. So now, uh, this is my final slide. With, with this slide, uh, I'll be completing my lecture. So importance of research and general publications. So basically, why we need to publish our uh, research papers, enhancement of teaching practices, unless we publish journal papers I and mean, good quality research output, we may not be able to connect research outputs or research evidences with our own teaching practices. In order to get this clarity, even to infer or even to interpret some other top rate journal paper findings, we should have some kind of idea and understanding towards research. Second one is students tend to learn effectively. You look at any of the Western University curriculum that they cite a lot of references. I mean, journal paper references, part of their teaching and so on. Let me show you one of the quick example to understand this. See, this syllabus is coming from London School of Economics and the Political Sciences. Uh, course name is Organizational Behavior. Course duration is 54 hours lecture and a class time over three weeks. Now look at uh, the session-wise content. See, lecture one, introduction to the course, personality and individual differences. Professor name is mentioned here, required readings. There is a paper coming from personality and performance. It's a record reading. In addition to the mandatory reading, they're also giving some recommended background readings and supplemental reading. So this is coming from one of the book chapter. This is coming from Journal of Operate Psychology. This reference is a editorial book content, book chapter. Similarly, for the session two, motivation and rewards. Here they are going to teach something on motivation and rewards. Mandatory reading is coming from Academy of Management Executive. Then uh, recommended readings are coming from one of the book chapter. Then British Journal of Industrial Relation, it's a journal paper. And then they're also recommending one more book chapter. So this is the way how they fine tune their course content. And uh, students has to go through all of these references before they, they come to the class so that they'll get much more clarity in terms of their understanding. So 
that's the reason I'm also trying to say that you should have some research understanding as well as research exposure in terms of integrating research references with your own regular teaching. Then uh, encouragement of research based practice and knowledge protection that is very much possible. A chance of getting admission into top colleges when you publish good papers, there is a high probability that you will also get admission into some other premier institutions. Helps in building a professional career. You get recognition across the globe uh, by producing good quality output. Unless I have uh, some papers, I don't think so. Professor Kasturi would have called me to uh, deliver this particular lecture. So it creates some visibility among your own peer group. Uh, then cash incentives, for example, in some of the IMs and the private business schools, you can get cash incentive of up to 15 lakh and so on. There are there are cases where if you publish FT50 paper, you get 10 lakh incentive. There are cases where you if you publish a category paper, you get some 5 lakh or 6 lakh incentive and so on. So that is very much possible. You can get good academic career growth. The reason why I'm sitting at University of Hyderabad is because of my research papers. Because for shortlisting itself, they came to three or five papers, I think three papers in my selection process. So unless, uh, uh, I mean, I would have produced three papers after the completion of my PhD, I don't think so. I would have got this job and uh, sitting here and delivering this particular lecture. So if you want to get better academic career growth, definitely. That's how the system is uh, functioning at present in India as well as across the globe. So we can question why we should publish and so on. If you want to land into teaching practice, you look for some uh, organizations, I mean institutions where they encourage teachers to do more teaching work, where they are not encouraging uh, you to publish more research papers. But in general, I mean, one or other way, they will also create some pressure in terms of publishing papers. Then uh, gaining respect and international presence. That's what I also mentioned a little earlier. Then popularity of the faculty or researchers and etc. and so on. So there's a the few reasons why we should publish good quality papers in some of the top ten journals. That's it. So here the core agenda is saying something about open access publishing. That I would have completed within 30 minutes. It's a kind of what is what sort of uh, content. Beginning of the portion and ending of the portion, whatever I have discussed is some of the general topics associated with research and teaching. I hope I have imparted something to the, um, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, group of these participants. If you have any questions or uh, comments or disagreements, please feel free to share it in the forum, a either in the form of chat messages or maybe live chat. You can come to the live chat, that is better. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Murugan, sir. Personally, yeah. it is always a pleasure on my part to hear from you. You have but to yes. say that because you are the organizer. No, sir. Uh, no, not, like, okay. not like that. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Uh, like I have known you for some time now, and it's always a pleasure to you know exp uh, hear from your experience. But uh, before we open the session for discussion, I would like to quickly sum up. Hope I do justice to your presentation. So today, uh, at the beginning of his presentation, Dr. Murugan has talked about the current scenario where there is mushrooming of fake journals, which is published usually over social media platforms. He, he explained this with extensive examples. Thank you, sir, for this sensitization. Uh, he also mentioned how besides the academic purpose, we as a researcher need to disseminate the knowledge and take it to the policy level. Therefore, we need to look into the ethical aspects. He cited the examples of Western universities where the theses are scrutinized by internal committees and the researcher can publish whenever they feel they are ready to do so. But uh, the sad thing he mentioned here was that this is not the case in the Indian scenario, but how we can avert it by creating pipelines in one aspect uh, we can look into. And then the other technique is through collaborations. It will create more of knowledge base. Then he went on to deliver his lecture about open access publication, which is freely available digital online information, usually free of charge. And usually it carries less restrictive copyright and licensing barriers. He also explained this entire process through some practical examples. 
he said that sometimes open access publication one needs to pay money as article processing fee or charges but this is completely different from pay and publish journals he explained the various creative licensing categories and their nature he explained to us how to infer the meaning of all these licenses with practical examples with this he explained how we can make our work more visible and also track our citations he touched upon various online resources for research which is also important from the perspective of teaching and learning he also expressed his views on open access data sources and how we can use it for research and also in the teaching and learning process he also deliberated on how we can verify a journal in databases especially corpus next he discuss what are the like red flags to spot predatory publishers and one of the ways is by looking into jeffrey bell's list and there are many other ways he concluded his session with the importance of research and journal publication what i must add here from my own is that it was indeed a very intensive in depth uh, session with lots of practical examples and i'm really um honored to you know with the to be moderating this session for you uh, now i would like to open the house for discussion participants if you have any questions uh, you can go ahead because uh, most of us are maybe not quite acquired with the knowledge of open access publication however some might as well so participants please go ahead yeah any questions thanks for your uh, wonderful summary professor kasturi thank you thank you sir yeah any questions from the participants side thank you sir for this wonderful session but for getting your input fully i must go through the recording once again okay yeah anything from the participant side so mostly participants are from northeastern part or uh, across india no no so we have uh, a pan india composition and okay. uh, we have uh, people from from ug pg uh, phd mphil and we also has few scientists with us today and it's a pan india it's a horizontal and vertical division sir actually fine, to be fine. honest fine. perfectly yeah. fine yeah so any questions not even one question uh some people might have but they are saying that they need to go through the recording once again gitima deka some people has been asking us to post your uh, this entire you know lecture session um, because i think they might i i feel sir if i am allowed to discuss this yeah. uh, open access is quite not everyone is familiar with or maybe because we uh, lack you know uh, knowledge about publications and other things and we are more concerned with the hard publications and mm -hmm. open access is something not everyone is so well acquainted in so i think the participants need some time to have a grasp over the entire matter but um, as uh, being in this field for a bit of time now i am also quite not sure how to go for open access publication so there are some do's and don'ts which i got to know today and how to do it but what i am uh, concerned about is sir like how do we spot you know our particular research interest a particular journal for our work to get published this is something i need to, can you explain it to us once more yeah uh, one of the simplest logic is that during the literature review itself you might have come across a lot of uh, references right so if you go through those references you will get some understanding about okay my kind of uh, uh, domain related research works are keep on getting published in journals like so and so so and so so and so that is one way second way is uh, using this journal finder tools also you could identify the appropriate journal for your own research once you are done with the writing of the paper you just go through your own cited references that will also give you some clarity okay these are the journals where i have cited which means that my paper may be appropriate to uh, uh, i mean appropriate for 
I mean, appropriate to submit into some of the journals which I have cited so far in my research paper. That's the third way. Fourth one is uh, you just go through the aim and the scope of the journal. I mean, you type any journal name, you go to the web page, there you will get some uh, details about aim and scope of the journal. There you will get much more clarity in terms of understanding what sort of papers they are publishing. So by reading that aim and scope of the journal, you will also get some clarity whether my paper can be accepted here or not. Then the next way is if you have some doubt over and above all those informations, you write, uh, write an email to the editor of the journal by sharing your title and then abstract of the paper. Even sometimes you can also share the full paper also, even before you submit it to your journal. The editor will tell you, okay, this is appropriate or this is not appropriate. You look for some of the journals and so on. That is the next way. Another way is, for example, you go to Emerald. You just ask the Emerald, uh, um, I mean, a editorial assistant for any one of the journals or some other, in general, you can also send some email to the Emerald Publishing. They will recommend set up journals where you can also submit your manuscript. So finding the appropriate journal is not a, I mean, difficult task. As in fact, uh, if you are doing a proper research in terms of reviewing the literature, as well as uh, citing proper references related to our domain of research, easily we can um, come up with uh, some other targeted journals. But among those targeted journals, which is feasible for our research, that is something tricky. So in order to get this clarity, we need to enhance our understanding as well as you can talk to your peers or you can also talk to the people those who have already published their papers in that particular journal. Probably, uh, the, I mean, uh, these steps can solve your issue of selecting the appropriate journal for your publication. Beyond that, there could be some other ways, but uh, I'm not remembering all those ways at this moment. Okay, sir. Uh... Sir, um, I'm sorry, I have been pos po uh, posing these questions to, uh, I think, a few of our resource person for now. Uh, sir, um, the first question I want to ask about, what are your views on collaboration? Since you have talked about you know, some general aspects as well, what are your views about collaboration within the discipline and across the discipline? OK, now let me show you one of my research paper. And then I'll answer this question. So this is all my published papers. I'll take this particular paper journey, and then I'll show you uh, in what way this paper will add something to my CV. So this paper recently published on last week only. We got the I mean 4th August 2022. It's an online publication date, but very long back we got the acceptance. So the first author of this paper is one of my old uh, workshop participant from Tamil Nadu. Uh, right now he is with ISB uh, as a research assistant or faculty associate. Before uh, his ISB appointment, he was with IM Indoor under this particular professor. The second of the second second author of this paper is uh, associate professor at IM Indoor. So through this person, first author, I can uh, I got a. Uh, I mean, uh, email stating that right now we are working on a paper and my professor is uh, more into qualitative and we need some helping hand in terms of doing the data analysis as well as uh, writing the um, data analysis and results section. I said uh, there's nothing for me, so I can do it. Here I have uh, recommended them to use same analysis. Then I have uh, took care of the entire uh, from here to data analysis to result section including the presentation of the tables, figures, and everything. I think uh, that is available in the PDF file. If you go through the data analysis and result section, you will get all those tables and pictures. Yeah. From here, data analysis. So these are all the things I have done with respect to this particular paper. And they said uh, we would like to add you as one of the co-authors. I said, okay, that's fine. Anyway, I'll get one kitty in my CV. So I got this paper. It's a A category journal. If you look at this paper, uh, this paper was uh, done along with one of the XLRI uh, PhD scholar. Um, here, my role is again the entire conceptualization of the model building, then uh, writing the ma ma uh, data analysis and result section. Um, even though this journal is not a big journal, but in Scopus, it's a key one category journal. 
um, uh, uh, not A category, C category only, according to ABDC ranking is concerned. So I got another kitty in my CV. Uh, similarly, for everything, I mean, if you look at, except the three papers, the three, only in the three papers, I was the first author. In all other cases, everywhere, uh, I may be acting as second author or third author, in some cases, final author and so on. So what I'm trying to uh, uh, show you here is, this is the evidence of collaboration. So, see, I do have family. In Indian scenario, you know what sort of family support we get it from organization. Of course, I have complete autonomy in the university. Anytime I can leave the uh, premises, anytime I can uh, reach my uh, home, even then managing the family and the work is really difficult. On the top of it, we also get a lot of non-academic works. I mean, here I personally feel that Teaching is like only 10% of the job or 20% of the job done through by the faculty. Rest of the 80% of the time is devoted for other activities like projects or maybe research papers and so on. You may be thinking that we are all enjoying our life uh, in Central University, but that is not true, honestly speaking. Uh, I do have experience with self-finance engineering college, self-finance arts and science college, then what does contractual faculty in NIT Trichy. Comparing everything, working in a government institution is much, much more tougher than working with the private institutions, where they are not emphasizing a lot about research publication. Working there is much, much easier than working in some of the organizations where they're giving a lot of attention to the research publication and so on. But what I'm trying to say is uh, um, you create your own, uh, I mean, team, team in the sense you have at least four or five core members in your team. For example, you start a project, you involve them in terms of taking care of introduction part, discussion part, data collection part. You take care of remaining things. You ask them to involve you in their projects, asking in the sense you should mutually contribute something towards their project. Through this way, mutually, we can get benefit out of uh, whatever may be the papers we are publishing in the near future. This is how the Western authors are uh, doing a tremendous uh, uh, quality of work as well as publication. I can show you one more evidence here in terms of emphasizing something about collaboration. Um, For example, if you look at this professor, uh, uh, I mean, works, she publishes at least 10 to 15 papers in a year. I'm trying to locate the papers. Uh, yeah. Second. Just look at the citation count 24,817. Let me sort the papers by year. See, they have a really closed group. This Kachmar, then Ferguson, I'll, I'll spot Ferguson name also. Thompson, Kachmar, Carlson, then um, Ferguson is also another uh, collaborative author. Uh, does a lot of works along with Carlson. Just look at the 2021 paper along. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 papers she has published. You just look at the journals. Journal of Occasional Behavior, A star category, Career Development International, A star or A category. Uh, journal of Social Psychology, I think B category. Information Technology and People, I don't know the category. Journal of Management, Premier Journal. Human Performance, another Premier Journal. Human Relation, another Premier Journal. Journal of Occupational and Organizational Psychology, another top rate journal. And Journal of Occupational and Psychology, Journal of Organization Behavior, and so on. So this is a way how they're doing a lot of collaborative work. 
and they keep on they're also publishing a lot of papers in really top tight journals so this is how collaboration will help us to grow mutually at the same time we can also get some kitty in our city i don't know whether i have answered your question but i just shared some of my experiences you did sir sir uh, one question outside of this just a minute yeah. uh, is it not a bit extra load for a college teacher to publish articles in this kind of journals because our duties are already heavy uh tricky to answer this but uh, you can't separate research from teaching you can separate teaching from research so whatever maybe the teaching we are doing all those teaching uh, content is coming from research evidences only unless we have this is my personal opinion i don't want to offend anyone uh, those who are attending this program unless we uh, um, produce good quality research work we may not be a better teacher that's what uh, some of the uh, uh, philosophies i mean teaching philosophies are saying but you can also make counter arguments stating that no 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 i'm a best teacher in my college but i do not have a paper publication and so on but that is your perception or maybe that is your view you may be right i may be right i may be wrong you may be wrong as, uh, as well but uh, research is uh, i mean inseparable from teaching profession that much only i can tell you at this moment one last question from my answer before yeah. we we'll wind up yeah. uh, sir sometimes we have done our phd in something but yeah. then we want to track change our track for example for some time now i have done my phd in consumer behavior but for yeah. some reason i want to you know link the entire two things with uh, environment so how Possible. is it is it possible for someone to change possible. the track or we will or we will be will we be judged uh, on the academics because we have changed track from our previous no no not like that not like that if you look at consumer behavior literature it's a, one of the well established literature in the past but if you look at uh, energy consumption and then the sustainable development goals uh, reducing the net carbon emission for example now uh, from the consumer point of view recycling is one of the big topic yesterday i watched a regional television news channel they were talking about uh, introducing bottles and then tetra pack to sell their day to day consumable milk packets and so on for example in tamil nadu we have a dairy firm called avin it's a brand of uh, tamil nadu uh, uh, owned company so they sell milk packets in cities as well as in rural and urban uh, suburban areas so they transport everything in the form of uh, that i mean uh, packets only packets in the sense uh, that polythene packets only so now they are trying to bring some changes in terms of reducing the consumption of plastic and so on so for example if the consumers are having really good awareness about this particular process and if they are supporting recycling activity or if you are able to embed uh, recycling behavior among the people then this problem can be mitigated uh, in a drastic manner so you ask the consumers to save some of their milk packets maybe for month or maybe two months and then you just try to hand over all those packets to the uh, producer milk producers they can do the recycling so that uh, we are not wasting any of the uh, uh, plastics at the same time we are not polluting the environment now if you are able to bring this particular component and then attach it to some of the existing consumer behavior theories it's a novel research basically that's how these days people are getting publications from journals like journal of cleaner production then some other sustainability related journals if you look at the kind of papers they are publishing almost everything is falling under any one of the consumer behavior category if you are dealing with consumers related surveys and consumer related data points so yes we have to track our uh, uh, i mean we we need to change our track i mean research track depending upon the context depending upon the uh, uh, need and the requirements of the society as well as industry yes that is very well applicable possible only that's what i'm saying thank you sir it was indeed a, such a insightful session for every one of us i think there is no more any questions from the participants in and my list of questions have also exhausted so okay. if Smartly i have, you have managed the two hours time thank you <laughs> so sir um, if i have any questions i'll personally get in touch with you yeah. uh, so i would like to thank you sir for coming in today and you know 
taking us to such an intensive session. I hoping that all the participants are helpful and i'm uh, because all of them are asking for the recording of this session i would like to thank you so much for joining us today and participants kindly stay back we will be starting our validatory session in 10 minutes morgan sir if it's possible i would like to request you to stay for the validatory section and if not you have some prior engagement we would not mind if you decide to not join us. No, so really sorry because uh, uh, twelve thirty. Uh, actually, I have some other commitment. Yes, in between, sir. I need to reach my home. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us today. And participants, please stay back. We will be um, joining our session in ten minutes for the valedictory, or you can come back and join after ten minutes. We will be starting at twelve fifteen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks to all the participants and uh, Kasturi ma'am for the invitation as well as wonderful coordination of the event. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Murugan sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.